Mon History, Lesson Two. Shaman fighting beast from the Mon point of view. Last time, we left off from the first lesson that the southerners, mainly Shu, Chu, Nan, Man, Bai Yi, and Dong Yi, took control of the Yellow River Basin again. They formed Han Dynasty, Han Guo. Mongol was pushed into the north, the deserts, and other northern regions. Before we continue from where we left off, let's recap some timeline and touch base on the Hmong religion and culture. While the Mesopotamian and Egyptian civilizations of Western Asia and others, such as the Roman Empire, took place. Hmong and Man civilizations also formed in Northern Asia and Southern Asia. Xia Hmong and Mongol formed at the Yellow River Basin. Hmong were known to have existed in Northern Asia for a very long time. We also learned that there were migrations between Northern Asia and Western Asia. Now it is the Middle East. Migrations between Southern Asia and Eastern Asia also took place. We know that Xia Hmong or Hmong Xiongnu people practice shamanity. In Hmong language is Fa Di Shi Yinling, which is to fight Xiu Zinyong. The creed of Hmong shaman or shamanity is different from other shamanism. The term Du in Hmong means God and the universe. It is also known as Tinger to others. Hmong originally worshipped Du, the father and mother of the sun, the moon, and the holy mountain of planet Earth. Hmong preached that the saviors were sent by God. Let's briefly compare this Hmong God religion to the Central Asian and Western Asian version, which could originate from the same root. In the past, many stressed that the religion of God spread from Western Asia into other regions. By tracing Hmong history, it appears that the God religion took place in Northern Asia first, especially at the Yellow River Basin. From the Hmong shamanity, the creed of the Hmong shaman, Fa Di Shi Yinling, was sent by God to fight the demons and the beasts. Shamanity is to connect with God and the divine spirits, to travel from this world to the dark side, the other side, to heal sickness and to give life back to the dead to fight the evil force of the beast Zinyong Chiyo, the practice of shamanity or Tinga spread from the Yellow River Basin into the north, into Siberia and Central Asia. If Ndu is the same god as the Tinga god spoke by the Turkey among Xiongnu people and by Abra's people. Then the god religion of Abraham originated in Northern Asia. The religion of God expanded from the Yellow River Basin into Siberia, Central Asia, and then to Western Asia. Hmong religion of God and their savior, Fatih Shi Yinling, existed over a thousand years before the existence of Abra, or Abraham and his people. The purpose of this discussion is to clarify that Hmong as a whole do not or did not worship Shio Zinyu. Hmong do not practice the Shio culture, the demonic culture of the Ma Yi, Nama, Han culture who also consider themselves to originate it from snakes. We learned 
from the first lesson that most of Chiyo's people, the Zhu Li of the Nanyi clans, immigrated south to the White River, the Yangtze River. They were mostly known as Sanmiao, who were Dongyi, Nanman, and Baiye. These people were mostly known as Mangyi. They worshipped Jinyun, Chiyo, and snakes. Once Chu, Shu, Dongyi, Baiye, and other southerners took control of the Yellow River Basin and formed Han Dynasty, Han made Chiyo their ancestor and worshipped Chiyo again. Han people of Han Dynasty practiced Chiyo mask. They referred to themselves as being macho men, but the men wear dresses. Men wearing dresses or shan skirts was the Mangyi Sanmiao culture. They were the ones that formed Han Dynasty. This is a sample artifact created during Han Dynasty. Shows that Han men wearing dress. Very different from the Xiamen culture, which Mon wore baggy pants. This is Han culture of the southerners and not Xiamen culture of Zhou, the northerners. Here is a sample of Xiamen or Mon Xiongnu, men wearing baggy pants. Men would wear long coats split by the legs and wear waist belts over their baggy pants. Another difference between Mongol and Hanguo during that time was that Han national language was the southern language. It was the Man, Naman language. In Mandarin, it is known as Saman Yu. Mang Yu, Na Mang Yu, or simply Mang Yu, meaning Mang language. This language was spoken along the Yangtze River from east to west, now considered to be local Han language. Mong language was and is very different from the local Han language along the Yangtze River. However, local Han language along the Yangtze River is very similar to Nanman languages such as the Zhuan, Lao, Thai, or Dai language. It is also very close to Minang Yu and Taiwan language or Taiwan language. Those various local Han language were originally the Nanman Baiye language. During Han Dynasty, Buddhism spread from Southern Asia into Han Guo, and it became an important language, excuse me, an important religion among Han as well as others. I do want to clarify one thing that many tend to believe that because of Buddhism, people of China became accustomed to cremation. That's not true. The Songmiao Nama Bai Ye and other Ma'i's burial culture since Zhou Dynasty had always been cremation and bone collecting. Bone collection is a process that people will collect dece deceased bone after a few years, and those bones were either grind or burned in a ritual. They would then save them into jars and urns. As Chu Han conquered the Yellow River Basin, many Han then became accustomed to burial according to the Zhou Mongol culture. Yet many continued to practice cremation and bone collecting. Jaws such as these in Southeast Asia and around China were originally used to store bones or ashes of the deceased. Okay, let's get back to the Hmong history. To comprehend the Hmong history during the later Mongol dynasty, 
Hmong consisted of multi bloodlines. Hmong were the alliances of multi group who united into the Hmong nation. Southerners who assimilated into the Hmong nation of Zhou dynasty also fled into the north. On the other hand, the Hmong who stayed behind and assimilated with the Han culture, with the Han nation to the south. This was during Han dynasty. While in the northern plain, the Hmong at the Hmong mountain of the Gobi Desert was the main group that united most tribes into the later Mongol or northern Mongol. Hmong of that era were known to worship God and had a mountain ritual. The two Hmong leaders during that time were Tomang and Mongdu. After Zhang Yu, Mongdu came to lead, Han to the south paid tribute to the Hmong for a period of time. Many Hmong then came to live to the east, called Donghu. They had a civil war and split into two groups. Those who migrated to the west were known as Xiongnu, or continue to be known as Xiongnu in literatures. The ones stay behind in the east were known as Xiangbei. These two groups of people were known to associate it with the name Mong. After the split of the Donghu region, the people along the Han border from east to west on the northern front were known as the Five Alliances. On the Mandarin, it is the Wuhu. To the central west, a Hmong leader B struggled for the throne against his cousin Punu and broke away. He and his Hmong followers were recruited by Han as a vassal state to fight the other Hmong Xiongnu. Outer Hmong Xiongnu or Northern Hmong Xiongnu then took control of the western region. They controlled the Hersey Corridor and the Silk Road for over a decade. After Han and Southern Hmong Xiongnu attacked their position, they lost control and fled to the Altai Mountain. For the Southern Hmong Xiongnu, there was tension among themselves. One of the leaders, Yu Fu Lu, and his followers then fled into Han country. They came to live among the Yellow Turban and the Black Mountain Bandits. These people were led by Ye Shao. Among, excuse me, Hmong then were politically involved with the Han nation up until the Yellow Turban rebellion that led by Zhang Qie. That rebellion eventually led to the end of Han Dynasty. Zhang Qie and his followers worship God. The Yellow Turban Rebellion during Han Dynasty took place in this yellow area. After that war, the Han people of the southern nation decided to leave the Yellow River Basin. Two of the southern leaders that took his people back to the south and broke away from the north was Liu Bei and Xun Chuan. They formed Han, excuse me, Shu Han country and Wu country, also Wu Han people. To the north, it became Wei. Once Wei conquered Shu Han to the southwest, the Han family, Sima, took control and changed Wei into Jing country. By this time, the Wuhu or the Five Alliances, Mo Xiongnu, Xiangbei, Jie, Chang, Di, were very much involved with Jing. Keep in mind that the Mo Jie, Mo Xiangbei, Mo Xiongnu, and others were left behind in the northern plains. Those people lived freely and controlled a vast region. They later would follow into the Yellow River Basin. 
by 280 A.D., Jin defeated Wu to the southeast and incorporated to Jin Dynasty. Later, the Han eight Sima princes were fighting for control. Emotional leader Lao Ye was working for one of the Sima princes. Lao Ye and his people were emotional. Who took on the clan named Lao? During the chaos, Lao Ye declared independence from Jin and established another Han country. This was a new Han country that was ruled by Mong Shongnu. It was a Mong Han country, and this is the beginning of the sixteen kingdoms. Mohan country then was changed to Zhou. Most of the five alliances, or the Fu, excuse me, or the Wu who created most sixteen kingdoms during that time, do know that these people were Zhou people, mainly the Mongol people who were pushed out during the Warring States. They came back and reestablished their kingdoms that existed during Zhou Dynasty. Zhao, Yang, Qi, Qing, Wei, Song, Cheng, Xia were again used as kingdom names from the sixteen kingdoms up until the northern and southern dynasties. Lian to the northwest is a new kingdom name, but. It's also created by Mong people. Lian in Mong is known as Lang. Lian is a Mandarin pronunciation, but Mong call it Lang. The areas of sixteen kingdoms were mostly taken over by northern Mong Xiangbe, and it became Wei country. Later historians renamed it into Northern Wei or Bei Wei to differentiate from the original Wei Kingdom during Zhou Dynasty and the Wei of the Three Kingdoms. Wei then broke up into Western Wei and Eastern Wei. Wei, Qi, Zhou of the Northern Dynasty were all Mong kingdoms. Western Wei became Zhou. And Eastern Wei became Qi. Zhou attacked and took over Northern Qi to the east, and many took refuge back into the Northern Plain. However, Zhou's emperor died, and Zhou of that era was taken over by the Yang family. Yang, the Yang family, were also the Mong Xiangbei branch. They formed Sui Dynasty and conquered Cheng to the southeast. Sui, remember, it's also a Mong kingdom. I want to point a couple more things before we wrap up. By the time of Northern Zhou Dynasty to Sui Dynasty, the fewer of Mong people. Had already entered the south and southwest as part of the expansion of Mongol nation. The majority people there were Shu Han, Mang Yi, Xi Yi, and other Nanmang people. We will talk about the Mong of this region during our next lesson. To the northeast. And the far north by Siberia and Heilongjiang, Mong who were left behind still lived there. The three main groups were Mong Qingdan, Mong Jisheng, and Mong Shiwei. Part of the Mong Qingdan fled to live among the Quarturks to the west, and they were known as Tujie in literature. Tujie, these Mong people were later defined 
into two nationality in China now. But many of these two people are claiming to be Hmong. Goturks was a general term for people who live in this area, which include the northern Hmong Xiongnu, the Rohan, and the Turkey from the Central Asia that came to the east and live among these people. It is very clear now that Hmong were coming back from the later Mongol or northern Mongol of the northern plains into the Yellow River Basin and into the central and the south. Those regions were their ancestral home. They were the Mongol nation of Zhou Dynasty who were pushed out and came back. This is Hmong History Lesson 2. We will learn more about Hmong history in the next lesson.